you don't know what you're going to face and to face it with joy I enter the gates with thanks I enter the courts with praise that you know you're going in with high hopes and you're planning that it's going to end well so you forge the path with with joy and hopeful expectancy hello welcome back as we continue taking a look at universal truths symbolisms and the psychological profiling of the zodiac we are taking a look at the individual pieces and parts which are called the Sabian degrees there are 360 degrees in the zodiac we're taking a look at two at a time today we are on Sagittarius and Gemini 11 and I look at the opposite degree on the wheel because it is in play today just as much as Sagittarius is for those of you who are into astrology, this is not just for the sun. This information would apply to you know, any of your personal planets, midpoints, asteroids, house cusps, you name it. If it's important in your chart, you can use this information to get a deeper understanding of that placement in your chart. And without further ado, thank you, thank you for being here. Here we go, Sagittarius 11. In the left section of an archaic temple, a lamp burns in a container shaped like a human body. A woman perceives her seemingly mundane world as beautiful and mysterious, a string of pearls. In an old abandoned house, a man finds a candle burning, wrestlers inventing new ways to entertain spectators. The stone is marble onyx and it will be in the description both will if you'd like to take a look at them great for transformation work it helps you connect with your past and do work with your ancestral connections it speaks to your inner warrior shows how our emotional mental spiritual states of mind are both independent and collective forces within us it helps those who are embarking on a new life path it helps you realize your value and how you stand out in a crowd it aids with self-confidence and self-awareness going over the same ground and we do that in many ways you know you get up every morning you have a routine but if you are only skimming past you may not notice new things here we're asked to look for the beauty and it will find us know that there's always some deeper meaning in everything that we do the wisdom is always there and, and it's just we have to find it we have to look for it. we have to ask for it and if we do it will present itself to us so the woman who sees her seemingly mundane world as beautiful and mysterious so beauty is held within each of us the light is within us if we think that we're beautiful then we are and that's not in just an egotistic way it's saying if you are constantly looking for what's wrong with a situation then you're gonna find what's wrong with it but if you look for the beauty you will find the beauty there's always something beautiful to be found and also to move deeper and deeper into the same area so if you have a favorite book like I mean for me for instance I love astrology I have been going over these degrees over and over I couldn't even tell you how many times that I have done it but each time I do learn something new that's why I keep going back to it because I feel I am meant to keep at it until something clicks and each time something clicks it just spurs me on to keep looking further this can be applied to many things it could be a painter that only paints one type of flower but each time like Georgia O'Keeffe the way she painted flowers and, and she looked at them in a different way each time. Each, each time you look at it you see something slightly different, something deeper, something more beautiful. So it's looking into the depths of things, looking beneath the surface for the beauty. It's called alabaster but also marble onyx. It speaks to this where we are not only one raindrop when the rain drops into the ocean it becomes the ocean so the way that marble onyx talks about how 
you know, the emotions may be one part, and yes, they're independent, but they also work together as a whole. So an ability to pull things together and, and see the pieces in part, see the beauty in each, and the stone speaks to that. So it might be a point of meditation to get more on this particular degree if this is strong for you. Seeing yourself as a vessel, and that is spoken of here twice. So it's the container shaped like a human body and then also the old abandoned house. A man finds a candle burning. So envisioning that the light is always within us. We are ancient. We are timeless. We are beauty. Let's take a look at Gemini 11. Newly open lands offer the pioneer new opportunities for experience. Rain falling on the ocean. A stag with golden horns. Right before the museum closes, a man hides in a painting. A woman plunges into a river and absorbs its renewing spirit. The stone is Sovereite, and I believe I am pronouncing that correctly. The spelling will be in the description. It's a type of garnet. It helps release feelings of inadequacy. It helps manifest prosperity and success. It enhances psychic gifts, such as intuition, telepathy, and increasing your visions. It heals the heart chakra, increasing zest, Vitality gives a feeling of charity, promotes love and understanding in relationships. So here we're looking at fresh starts, experiencing things in a new way, um, possibly shocking, possi just anything can happen. Anything can happen. There's an ability to tap into higher levels of awareness as well as universal consciousness here. So a highly mental degree where you're tapping in to higher consciousness. But what do you do with it? The high road is to put it to use in some sort of new way where you are a vessel of light. This is a degree of purification, a woman plunging into a river and absorbing its renewing spirit. So sudden insights are possible here going off the beaten path, preparing to take risks, taking the information that we've been working on during these last 10 degrees, now we're on 11, and forge a new path. Facing new opportunities with joy and verve. <laughs> so that's how I'm going to take this one. There's one bit that I want to go back to tapping into our reactions to new environments. So that's how these two degrees do pull together is paying attention to the physical body when new situations arise. Like um, there's talk of gestalt therapy. How do you react to things? So is it fight or flight? Do you get all stressed out? Do you gather information and then convert it into meaning? Do you get all angry? So it's, it's paying attention to how you react to new situations. It's so that we can try to maintain our integrity of who we are in a new situation while taking in new stimulus. So new stimulus here. And what I, I think we're being guided here to do is to be the light, be the beauty. So if you're in a brand new situation, you don't know what you're going to face, and to face it with joy. I enter the gates with thanks. I enter the courts with praise. That, you know, you're going in with high hopes and you're planning that it's going to end well. So you forge the path with, with joy and hopeful expectancy, and you'll have a better way of it. Looking at how we approach things and, and paying attention to our body, paying attention to our reactions to new impulses. Focusing on the present rather than the past, so not saying, oh, every time I have met a person who looks like this, you know, X, Y, Z happens, to see each moment anew. So that's, that's all, that's part of the Gestalt therapy. If you have more on that, please leave a comment. I'd love to hear it. 
seeing the body as a vessel of light, seeing the body as our guidance, and paying attention to it at all levels, but being present and not relying on memory of past experiences as our sole guide as to what's going to happen right now. Like, don't map it out before it's even happened. It's, it's looking at things anew. Look for the beauty and you'll find it. So that's what I have for you today. I thank you so very much for being here, for liking, commenting, and subscribing. And until next time, please take care.